Good morning. My name is Donna Fresh, and I chair the Louisiana Health Care Commission. And it's my privilege again to welcome you to the Louisiana Department of Insurance 2012 Annual Health Care Conference. What you are going to experience here today, and I truly believe that's why we're sold out with, with standing room only. And the reason for that is you are very fortunate to have the array of talent that is going to present to you today. I don't think anywhere in America there's been such an accumulation of knowledge and expertise on the issue of the day. We all know this. You, if you will, you can broadly think of health care as either Medicare for the elderly, Medicaid for the poor, or you can think of private insurance market. So we have three distinct markets. What is really driving this debate right now is Medicare and Medicaid, and to an extent, but kind of lagging behind, is the private insurance market. Medicare, the Medicare trust fund, depending on who you talk to, will be bankrupt in seven to 10 years. Now, of course, the trust fund is only for a certain part of Medicare. The other part is paid for out of the general fund, if you will. So Medicare indebtedness is um, one huge issue for our country. And when folks say, listen, I've paid into Medicare my whole life, why is a Medicare going bankrupt? For all of us who are baby boomers, we are the problem. Uh, when they first came up with Medicare, I wish people like you had been in the room, but they said, well, listen, every family has four kids. We presume that from henceforth, every family will have four kids. There always will be four kids paying for their parents, and we're going to have a population curve that looks like this. That was around 1964. In 1964 is when the birth control pill became increasingly used. And I think about what seemed as a detail then now is rewriting history. Because as families became smaller, and by the way, even in Catholic Louisiana, most of us have more brothers and sisters than we do children. Even in Catholic Louisiana, families became smaller. And instead of a population curve that looks like this, we have one that looks kind of like this. For those of you old enough to remember, I say it looks like Twiggy's figure, you know, no curves. <laughs> It just comes straight down. And therein lies the problem. Because instead of having lots of people paying for a few at the top, you have relatively few paying for lots at the top. 10,000 baby boomers enter Medicare every day. Wow. If we need to know why Medicare is going bankrupt, it is because actuaries were not employed at the outset of the program. Every day I travel around the, the state and I talk to people, as I do uh, my own family every day at the dinner table, we could have a health care a healthcare revolution and really see uh, incredible amount of reform in all of our houses. We know what is causing poor health outcomes in our state, and a lot of it has to do with us as individuals. So I tell people, own your own health. If you smoke, stop. If you eat too much, don't. And if you don't exercise today, start. Those are three very simple uh, instructions. At the same time, they're three of the most difficult challenges in the human condition. And we have a variety of support, education programs to help individuals do that. And it's not about just those on Medicaid or those that use a public hospital. It's everyone in our state. Everyone could do better by owning their own health, thinking about making healthy food choices, having more fruits and vegetables, and fewer items that are fried or filled with saturated fats or empty calories, and do more to get out to exercise. Even if it's a walk around the block, or walking the dog, or getting on the treadmill, do something at least three to five times a week. We're in a state of flux. As you know, the United States Supreme Court uh, two weeks ago uh, undertook oral argument in the health care reform legislation to see whether it is or isn't constitutional. So everybody's sort of in a state of flux. How is that going to affect our lives day to day? Are we on the trail of health care reform or are we going to go backwards or are we going to stand still? Are we going to keep going in the direction that we're going? Whichever way the lawsuit comes out and the politics come down, we're going to see major changes in the way health care is delivered and paid for in our country. Everyone admits the system is broke and needs reform. The question is, what reform do you prefer? I'm not a big fan of what was 
passed through the Congress two years ago last month. And hopefully, with the help of the Supreme Court and, and the Congress after this, elect, the, this fall's election, we'll be able to wrench, uh, ratchet back some of the, I think, overreach that the federal government did with this legislation and give us an opportunity to thoughtfully implement some private sector-based recoveries. Uh, there are those who would have us do a single-payer system similar to the Medicare system. We have seen what that produces for countries such as France and England and even our neighbors in Canada, and that's not what the best health care system in the world needs, and in my opinion. What would be your recommendation for Louisiana to be prepared? Uh, just to start talking already, even though you're probably not going to do a state-based exchange, even with a federal exchange, there are still opportunities for the states to work together, work with the federal government, and establish basically a plan management system that keeps the state involved and all the stakeholders involved. And that's the key. Get ready, no matter who's running the exchange, you can still have a major role in making sure that the people of Louisiana get the care they need. I think there is a lot being done right now regardless of uh, what the Supreme Court does. In fact, I would venture to say that more than 90 percent of what we're preparing for today is not throwaway. Regardless of what the Supreme Court does, we realize that the private markets must lead, not lead from behind, but find ways to address the true crisis in this company, in this country, excuse me, and that's the affordability of health care. What are some of the keys to uh, affordability? Well, we have to actually address utilization, and with that comes the accountability of consumers, the, the public, and how best they uh, buy health care services. So we have to look inward uh, to start the debate about health care reform and what are some of the things that we can do to actually address and improve our own health care, thereby eliminating or avoiding health care services by embracing preventive wellness and education. How will the changes of health care reform or federal health care reform impact the private health insurance market? And uh, quite substantially, as a matter of fact. So there's a tremendous amount of resources and investments that are being made in preparation for that, and companies like United Healthcare are, are leading the way in doing that. So at the end of the day, it's getting more folks in, engaged and concerned about their own personal health care. That's, that's what's going to make the difference. And so whether it's done under a form model or whether it's done with tools and technology, to help engage individuals better or more into their own personal health care, that's what's going to make the difference. So that's what I see us gaining here is the different perspectives from the constituencies. We've got regulators, we've got legislators, we've got health care companies that are all providing perspectives on what health care reform will do to the country. I think the message is that uh, in the health insurance industry, we're a house under pressure. No matter who you are, if you're a party in interest in health insurance, Healthcare reform has created a pressure system, uh, and as we all know, Murphy's second law of thermodynamics is that everything gets worse under pressure. As parties in interest, we've got to figure out how to work together with different business models, whether you're a health insurer, uh, a producer, meaning a broker, or the Department of Insurance, we've got to figure out how to work better together with different business models because the old models don't work anymore. I would like people to keep in mind that there are a number of provisions that are still not fully decided. We're all awaiting the Supreme Court decision, which is likely to come in June of this year, uh, that will provide a guidance re regarding the individual mandate, and also that um, we all have to work together as uh, providers in the market, as purchasers of health care, in order to have an effective health care system for many years to come. The message today is the, um, the introduction of a bill to allow the state of Louisiana to uh, comply with new federal regulations for rate review in the health care insurance market. And give us a little bit of background. Uh, what, what, is, what is this bill going to do? Um, this bill will ensure that the state of Louisiana complies with the federal mandate that states become or uh, prepare effective rate review programs so that uh, the states regulate the rates in the small and individual markets. We have done some of what is contained in PPACA like raising the eligibility for children to stay on their parents' health insurance plan without dramatically increasing the cost of health insurance. The actuarial benefit cost of that 
uh, reform was negligible. In fact, two dozen states had done it before PPACA was passed. And we're doing in this session what's mandated by PPACA and had been the law in our state until recently changed by the legislature, and that is a requirement that if you're insured and you have to go to a hospital or a health care provider on an emergency basis, heart attack, uh, a gallstone attack, or appendicitis, then your carrier must cover you for that expense, for that emergency treatment, as if it were done in network with you liable for just your normal copay and deductible requirement contained in your policy. Those are just two of the things that I think are needed to reform our system. I could name a lot of others, but it would probably bore your viewers, and um, that's what we're doing here today, talking about the pros and cons of what's in this bill and what's not in this bill that uh, would make our system better, more user-friendly, more affordable for folks who are trying to do the right thing and ensure them and their families uh, against health care uh, costs. The next five years are going to see dramatic change in the way health care is delivered in our country and how it's paid for. Whether it remains a employer-based system or not. One of the presenters today said that for a lot of folks who are in the upper income bracket, their cost of they they get subsidized because that is deductible off of their income tax return. Sometimes up to a third of the cost of their health insurance. Whereas a low-income person who doesn't take advantage of those deductions pays the whole cost of his health insurance. What I would like the, the viewers to remember is that we're making dramatic changes. They need to engage in this process with their health care provider, with their legislator, and with their congressional representative, and with us at the Department of Insurance. We can help take people through this very complex, very expensive part of their lives, but a vital part. If they need that help, contact us at 1-800-259-5300, or even go to our website, LDI, www.ldi.la.gov. But that number again, 1-800-259-5300. What's your reaction to everything you've seen and heard here today? It's been impressive. We have a great group of panels, panelists from all over the country and throughout state government and we have a standing room only crowd of over 600 interested participants, agents, company executives, consumer representatives, healthcare providers who came here today to take advantage of this really special opportunity to get up to date on this reform, as it's being called, that's impacting 17% of our nation's economy and the most important part of our insurance lives, our health insurance.